All right, so today I want to show you some more ball python hatchlings that I produced this year that I just posted over on morphmarket.com last night that are up for sale. And I'd say over on Morph Market, pretty much the number one question that almost everybody has. A lot of people are asking, hey, do you have any more bamboos or bamboo combinations for sale? We want a snake that looks like Bobby, like this snake around my neck here. This is Bobby, my eight-year-old male bamboo ball python. And kind of the interesting thing this year is I produced, I think it was like 35 eggs that had a 50% chance of getting the bamboo gene and I only hit it I think about five or six times I, I was like completely destroyed by the odds when it comes to bamboos it was pretty awful but as a matter of fact I actually have one bamboo left and it's going to be a holdback I'm 99% sure I'm going to hold this one back it's actually a pastel pinstripe bamboo calico possible het desert ghost and it's a female so uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to actually hold that one back as a future breeder. As a matter of fact, this year I'm actually breeding my bamboo calico to a bamboo lemon blast, hoping for the super bamboo. If I could actually hit a super bamboo male, then I could really control the number of bamboos that I produce every year because you breed it to something and all the offspring would be bamboos, which is a lot better than playing the odds with the bamboos, you know, with a 50% chance, which is kind of crazy. Kind of destroyed me this year with a lot of the odds although on some of these clutches I had really good odds really surprisingly good odds on some of these combinations and today I want to show you eight ball pythons that I posted over on Morph Market. As a matter of fact I kind of went through my rack and picked out some of the better ones to really show you some of the better stuff that I produced this year that I wish I could keep them all but you definitely can't keep them all so unfortunately I have to post them over on Morph Market which is a benefit if you're actually in the market for one of these snakes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling out some of these hatchlings and show you some of the awesome stuff that I produced here in 2021. All right, so take a look at this beautiful snake. I'm pretty sure this is actually a world's first ball python. I don't think anyone's ever produced one of these. And what this is, this is a lesser triple hat. So it's actually het albino, het pied, and het clown on top of the lesser gene, which is pretty amazing. So the, so the lesser gene looks kind of like this, but it looks a little bit brighter because I think because of the influence of the head clown. The head clown usually brightens everything. You can see this one's definitely brighter than your typical lesser. Kind of the other thing that's interesting is you notice the pattern is kind of whacked on the side. <laughs> I think that crazy pattern is from the head pied. A lot of times the head pied can kind of jumble up the pattern. And the head albino, as far as I know, the head, head albino, you, there's no markers at all or no difference in the visual appearance from a head albino. So you really can't tell. So essentially how I produce this, I actually took my albino pied and I bred it to a lesser clown. And I got quite a few of these with, with the lesser gene, which is kind of surprising. I couldn't believe that pretty much every single one uh, had the lesser gene in with the triple head. So I'm actually holding back one male and two females. And I'm going to sell this guy. This guy is actually a male. His name is Destroyer. Pretty awesome looking snake. All right, so take a look at this guy. This guy's name is Fang. Fang is an albino pied male. Take a look at that beauty. I actually produced three of these this year. I have two males and one female. I'm actually holding back the female. And it seems like both of the males are really high white and the female is like 50-50 which is kind of interesting. I actually have a really old male, a really big male albino pie just like this. I produce quite a few double hats and some triple hats breeding this to a clown. You can actually get into a lot of crazy recessives with, with a snake like this working all the different genes into a recessive project. Kind of one of the, I'd say the, the albino and the pied are both pretty much some of the best genes you can get as far as the recessive. The albino, the pieds, and the clowns, I'd say, are pretty much the number one most popular recessives. This guy, look at how much white he's got, like a really super pure white over a huge amount of his body. It almost looks like a leucistic, which is kind of crazy. And the male that produces just has one little spot right in the middle as far as the color. And the pied, if you're not familiar with pied, the pied brings in the white, and then the albino brings in the yellow, and of course with all your albinos you actually have the really bright red eyes like this guy. Really super bright. 
Really awesome looking snake. I've been trying to produce these for a long time. Finally, I got my female that I'm holding back, which is pretty awesome. All right, so take a look at this beauty. This is Apollo. Apollo is from that same clutch. And 50%, I had a 50% chance of getting the albino pied. All the other ones were just a straight albino. Look at how beautiful the albino is. This is just, this is just a straight albino. It's also 100% het pied because it came from my albino pied. I'd say it's probably one of my favorite snakes. Just the straight high contrast albino really amazing looking snake and kind of the weird thing about the albinos is if you actually look at them under a black light they look probably the most impressive you get this really almost like a fluorescent looking crazy looking snake under a black light i don't know if you've ever seen uh when you shine the black lights on some of your snakes it seems like the albinos are hands down the most impressive really good looking snake right there all right, so here is Rocky. Rocky is a lesser possible het desert ghost female. And this is what just a straight lesser looks like. And you can definitely tell the influence if you actually look at this one compared to the triple hat. The triple hat looks like it's a little bit brighter and it has like a line down the top and it has kind of a crazy pattern on the side of the snake too. So you can definitely tell the difference between this one and the triple head. And these lessers are usually really super bright as a hatchling and they kind of fade out just a little bit as they get older. And uh, I've actually found you can actually mix certain genes with them. This one's possible head desert ghost. But if you mix in like, uh, like a head ghost or a head clown, usually you can really keep the brightness of your lessers as they age and mature. I don't know what's up with this lesser, but she's looking at me right in the eyes like she's gonna like she's gonna bite me in the nose. <laughs> I think I woke her up from a nap. But so far, the, all my hatchlings have been really well behaved. Not really that bad. And she's look at how chunky she is. She is growing really super fast. As a matter of fact, uh, it's been about a week since I fed them, so they're all probably thinking, "Where's my mouse <laughs> that I'm used to feeding them?" And keep in mind, the lesser is also in the blue-eyed leucistic complex so if you breed this with another snake like uh, anything in the blue-eyed leucistic like bamboo or russo or mojave mocha all those all the genes of the blue-eyed leucistic uh, you'll actually end up with an all-white snake with blue eyes if you hit both genes in your ball python but she's a really good looking snake really nice looking Pretty well behaved, getting pretty chunky. <laughs> that is a good looking snake right there. All right, so this is the one that everybody's been asking about ever since I posted it. This is a calico. Her name is Terminator. It's a female calico. Possible hat desert ghost. I'm thinking maybe it's like a, maybe like a 50% hat desert ghost. Someone said that uh, they actually proved out my mail and produced a visual, which would mean all these calicos are actually about 50% as far as the odds. But look at the crazy pattern on the side of this thing. That is pretty awesome. And they have kind of a, almost like a coppery color to the calico. Look at the other side of the tail. Really crazy patterns on some of these calicos. And usually these calicos, they start out like a low white and the older they get, it seems like they get more and more white coming up the side, especially if you mix them in with like a bamboo. The bamboo calicos start out like a low white like this and they get really super high white over time as they age and mature which is pretty cool. And this particular version of Calico almost acts like a dark jean. It brings in a lot of the dark color. It would look good with if you actually mixed it with a lot of your other dark jeans, like uh, like Blackhead or GHI, it would make some pretty amazing combos with this version of the Calico. All right, so here is Goldie. Goldie is a male pastel, 100% desert ghost. And the more I'm looking at this, I'm thinking maybe there could be Enchi in this one too, just because it's really super bright. And sometimes with the Enchi, you actually get a little bit of a, a, like a bigger pattern on the back of the head. But if it is Enchi, I'm thinking it's 
maybe a low expression Enchi in this one, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'm actually just selling it as a pastel Het Desert Ghost. And I was actually looking at the belly of this one. Take a look at this. This is a really cool looking belly on the bottom of the snake. Take a look at that. A lot of speckling. And as far as uh, the influence of a het, uh, usually your het desert ghosts, as far as I know, they really don't brighten the snake. So it's kind of interesting that this one's pretty bright, a really super bright snake. And if you've ever seen the, the pastel desert ghost with two copies of the desert ghost, probably one of the brightest yellows that you can get in any ball python, which is pretty awesome. Might be a good project to go for working pastel into the desert ghost. All right, so here is Lucky. Lucky is a Coral Glow 50% Het Pied. Uh, the parent was actually 100% Het Pied, so the odds of getting the Het Pied in this one is 50%. It's a male, and it's a male maker. So if you actually took this and bred it to something else, all the Coral Glow offspring would all be males. Like, uh, I think you'll, like one out of 100, you'll actually get a female. So something like that. So, you know, I've been breeding these for years and every single Coral Glow that I've ever produced has always been a male. I'm still waiting for my female Coral Glow here one of these days. As a matter of fact, I actually hit a female banana this year. Uh, a lot of people think the banana and the Coral Glows are pretty much the same. But he's a good looking snake. He's been eating really well. All these have been eating really good on frozen thawed mice. Definitely have enough body condition now. Usually on the coral glows, the bellies are clear. And for some reason, it seems like for me, all the coral glows and bananas have been kind of the calmest snakes. Never really been snapped at by any of my coral glows or bananas compared to some of my other snakes. And some people say they have kind of the opposite experience where they have more aggressive coral glows. But look, not even headshot at all on this one. This, uh, this guy's like super mellow. I don't know what it is about my coral glows and bananas, but they're always really super mellow. All right, so I'm saving the best for last. This is Lefty. Lefty is a normal ball python, possible head desert ghost. I think it's in the 50% chance that this one is a uh, hat for desert ghost. And it's a female, which is pretty awesome. If you're looking into just starting ball pythons, you're looking for an inexpensive snake, let me tell you, these normals are pretty much the cheapest that you can get, and they make really great pets. Uh, if you're looking just for an inexpensive pet ball python. And I'm always hoping to produce fewer and fewer normals, although it seems like to be the best seller. A lot of people are always looking just for a normal ball python. Sometimes you can see maybe uh, unusual genes or markers or something like that. Sometimes you can pick up like Dinker Projects. This guy's got a really interesting belly. Take a look at that belly pattern on this guy. Really interesting. And as far as I know, I don't think you get that belly pattern from the Het Desert Ghost. You really can't tell uh, any markers on it if it's Het for Desert Ghost. But that's pretty much what I'm posting this time over on Morph Market. And I'm sure I'll be posting a few more over there. So what I'll do is after some of these sell and it kind of calms down, I usually post over there and then I get like this flurry of emails. And then I'm shipping out snakes and again, it's really keeping me busy, let me tell you. And then once that kind of calms down a little bit, then I'll post another batch of snakes over on Morph Market. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.